Hey, Linz. Hey, Morning, man. Rob. Morning. Oh, hi. So this is our first ever Friday product post. We moved the posts from Thursday to Friday to give you more time to watch them over the weekend. And hey, Dave. Hey, Robert. What's up? How much you? I'm starting to work out in the mornings. Oh yeah, you gotta hydrate. You gotta hydrate. See you around, buddy. See ya. So this is your first ever Friday new products post. Here at SparkFun, we get a lot of requests for custom products. And unfortunately, we don't do any custom engineering here. And we do realize that there are a lot of applications that we just can't come up with. And making custom hardware is essential, but unfortunately, we just don't do it. So what we've done is we've actually come up with one board that should fit all the needs of everyone ever. This is the Aldoff. The Aldoff is the culmination of all the work that we've been doing for the last five years. And what we've done is we've taken all of our knowledge and every board that we've made and we've condensed it down into one small package. This board will do just about everything. Let me run down some of the features of this board. At the top, we've got a Wi-Fi and GSM antenna. We've got the cellular module here at the bottom. We've got a GPS module. We've got an XB module. We've got a data tracking unit as well as a data logger. We've got an SD card socket. We've got a power supply, redundant power supply, a 9DOF module with three 3DOF modules attached to that for extra redundancy and pinpoint accuracy, um, which can serve as an AHRS unit or just a generic IMU. We've also got a 3-axis servo, a 3-axis gyro, and a couple more thrown in just in case you want to sum all the outputs together. In addition, We've also got a single USB connector, and we've also got three others so that you can use four different baud rates at the same time. If your computer does not have USB, we've also included a DB9 connector for your RS-232 control, and that is selectable wherever you want. We also have a power supply. We've got an onboard battery power supply with a battery charger, and the other nice thing about this board is this module here inside is actually a perpetual motion machine. This will actually harvest energy from RF radiation coming in, solar flares, um, radio antenna, all that stuff, and will actually harvest it, store it in the board, and actually if you plug this into your outlet, you will actually provide more energy for the power grid, and you'll actually save money using this board. In addition, we've got a median transverse copulation device which actually cancels out the gamma wave inverse radiation complex syndrome that is created by the multiple IMUs in such close proximity to all of themselves. In addition, it's also got a magma flow sensor. Um, in case you're doing any kind of weather tracking or volcano tracking, you can do the um, flow rate analysis of magma with this. And it's just a really fantastic board. We've even included a low jack system into the GPS data tracker. So if you put this into the glove box of your car, it'll never get stolen. You can track it. So there's a lot of things that you can use this for, and we're just waiting to see all the different applications that you can come up with this. So we've got a new product from Mayhew Labs. This is the rotary encoder breakout. The rotary encoder is a little bit different from a traditional potentiometer in that it doesn't have a minimum and a maximum. It just spins indefinitely. What you do is you hook it up to a microcontroller and when you spin it, it either reads it as an increment up or an increment down so you can keep a running counter to count if you're going up or down in value. The problem with the rotary encoder is since there's no real minimum maximum, you don't always know where that encoder is in your value range. These little breakouts are nice because it gives you a ring of LEDs that can set as an indicator. The LEDs are just controlled over an SPI interface and you've even got an LED at the bottom that can indicate the push of the rotary encoder. So let's see what they look like hooked up. We've got this simple little demo set up with an Arduino and we plug it in and turn the knob, we can see the lights increase and decrease as we turn the knob. Now you can set the scale and you can set how fast they turn on, if they all turn on or one single one turns on. You can control everything about the lights independently. We actually have this contraption hooked up to Dave's treadmill. He was going into the gun factory to do some exercising today and we've got this hooked up to the power incline. So let's crank this up and see what happens. What's going on? 
the same today. Power incline. I thought it would. Yes, it's... I think it has a mind of its own or something. So if you're getting started in electronics, the first thing that you're probably going to need is a soldering iron. There's a lot of different options out there on the market, and we put together a kit that could help you out a little bit. This kit is the SparkFun Soldering Iron Kit, and it includes everything you need to get started with soldering. It's got a power cord, a transformer, the main circuit board, and all these other components that you need for the kit. And the nice thing is, it has this really great enclosure that we found that really works well for this soldering iron kit. It's a good plastic enclosure, it's got a dial on the front, it's pretty handy. And when you get this whole kit together, it looks a little something like this. So it's pretty amazing that this was a kit. It really looks like a commercial product when it's done. It's got a nice spot for the power cord, the knob, everything. It's a really good finished product. And this is going to be a really good soldering iron for you to use on all your beginner projects. The only thing to note about this kit is the PCB does require some through hole soldering. So what we recommend is the SparkFun soldering iron kit. It's a great kit, it has everything you're going to need to put together the SparkFun soldering iron kit. So once you get this together, you can solder this up and have your very own soldering iron. Some of you might remember the Colorganic Spectralizer from a couple weeks ago. It's a pretty cool little kit, and at the heart of it is the MSG EQ7. That IC is interesting because it takes an audio input, separates it into seven different frequency bands, and gives you an analog voltage that you can read into a microcontroller and control LEDs or whatever else. We've put two of these on a shield, so now you can easily use this with your Arduino. All you do is feed it a left and right audio signal or a mono signal, and it will give you a analog voltage for those seven different frequency bands, and it just cycles between each one. We've got some pretty cool example code up on the website for this. However, for this video, we wanted to do something a little bit more original. So what better way to test this out than further hacking Dave's treadmill? So he's in there exercising right now, and what he doesn't know is in addition to the power incline, we've also hacked into the speed controller. We've got a microphone in the control panel of his treadmill, and we've got one of these connected into the speed controller. So what happens is the louder he screams, the slower the treadmill goes. So he's going to have to scream if he wants to control it. So all I have to do is hit this button and we go over to scream speed control. It's way too fast! Can't run that fast! Ah, oh, ah, oh no! Oh goodness! Oh! What? Are you kidding me? So if you've worked with electronics for any length of time, you'll know that the most frustrating thing about any project is accidentally hooking up something wrong and letting all the magic blue smoke out of your IC. It's really frustrating and there's really no way to correct it other than just swapping out the IC. Until now. We've come up with a way to take the magic blue smoke and put it back into the IC and get it working again. This kit that we now sell includes a syringe which is pre-filled with the blue magic smoke and it also comes with the secret focusing screen. The focusing screen works on tetragrammatron phase inductance, which sounds complicated, but it really isn't. All it does is when activated, it takes a smoke, concentrates it, and condenses it down into this phase ring and injects it directly back into the IC, no problem. Unfortunately, this creates a little bit of harmful fumes, so we can't do this inside in the studio, so we're gonna take this outside and see how it works. Here we're going to resurrect this Arduino IC. All we need to do is lift up the shield, put it right below the IC, and with our injector, inject the smoke directly into the funnel hole. Magic blue smoke, don't breathe this. And now once we're done, the IC has been resurrected. So 
These are our products for this week. As always, we have more on the website, so go ahead and check that out. And we had a lot of fun this week, and this is your first Friday new product post.